Well, welcome to our Habitat News. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We are coming from Hamilton here in our nice lovely makeshift studio. We're interviewing Simon Fisher Becker, who played Dorian in Doctor Who, and he's going to be joining us right here later on. And you know, I've got to say, I'd like to thank Home Again Expo for this lovely room and Cordland's Event Centre for you know providing the facilities. So that's what we've got coming up, and you'll also be joining us on our new revolved, well, revolutionised opening credits, where we can sit there and see who our new admins to the team are. And we are going to be following the Paul Henry format. I don't know if you've heard, he's got a new show on TV, so we're going to copy him. We're going to be on more platforms than any other web show in the world. We're going to be on YouTube, we're going to be definitely on iTunes. We're still looking for an upload to go on to for an audio one for the non-iTunes era, but trust me, we're still going over SoundCloud and a couple of others just because we're looking on the copyright. But, I have to say, it's going to be a fun packed year. We're going to be having a new studio in my new flat in Wellington. We're going to have live mixing, which is going to sit there and get these shows up online much quicker. Uh, how else? I don't know what else we're going to have. It's just going to be a jam-packed year, and, you know, I look forward to it. So, now, we're going to roll off your credits, and we want to see what your opinions is, so leave it in the comments below. Welcome to 0800 TARDIS News and, well, should we say it's our first show for 2015. I hope you enjoyed our new opening credits. We've kind of gone a bit up market and you can also see who our new admins are to the 0800 TARDIS page on there. So, on our first interview we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one with Simon Fisher Becker, I'd better make sure that's yes, right. Yes, Fisher Becker, yes. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, yeah, I don't know why, but it seems to be the Becker and the Fisher... Oh, like, the wrong way round, is what you're saying. Well, no, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it can be mixed up so easily. <laughs> yes, it can be. Yes, and um, there, are, there are times that people just get my name wrong completely. Um, uh, uh, somebody called me Baker. Simon, Don't, Simon Baker. There's no way in it. And Simon Bishop. And... Um, I don't know where they come from with that, but uh, I mean there was a, I mean I can give you an example, um, I was being paid by, by check and uh, somebody sent a check and made it out to Aisha Baker, Simon Aisha Baker, so of course the bank won't accept that, so, no, uh, so I contacted them, I said oh I did ask for the money to go directly into my bank, so could you just put it directly into my bank, so then what came was a Simon Fish back. Right. So I phoned them up again. Anyway, and said, Can you please put it into my bank? Yeah. Another check came and made out to Simon Fisher Dalek. <laughs> and I thought they're taking the piss out. So what I told them was that uh, I said, uh, This was a Monday. I said, if, if the money isn't in my account by Wednesday, I'm going to scan the checks that you've given me and I will put them up on Facebook. Anyway, the money arrived in my bank Tuesday. So, so you probably still got the Dalek check somewhere. Well, it's just so ridiculous. How did they get Dalek? It wasn't for BBC, was it? I mean, to be honest, uh, having worked in administration, I can understand how some things go, but it's three times they get it wrong. But the initial instructor would just pay it into the bank. You see, where they've only got to type in digits, you know, numbers. <laughs> yes, and as long as they get the right digits. I mean, with the Fisher Dalek, I can see that somebody's just. Oh, can you can you can you just do the check for Simon Fisher, or you know the guy that did the Dalek show? I can I can see that. That's how that's coming. So, but even so, silly asses. Right. So, what do you think of New Zealand? I love New Zealand. In fact, if I had to leave the UK, New Zealand would be a natural place for me to gravitate. And I've I've seen the length of it. So, a couple of years ago, I was in Auckland. I loved Auckland. 
uh, but uh, this time been uh, Dunedin, Christchurch, and now Hamilton, uh, and um, we've flown where there've been very little clouds, so we've seen your whole terrain. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah, I mean, you got to do it by car as well. We have done some by car. Oh, oh. We were in the minibus coming here today. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say you got the boring part, I think, myself, but... Oh, I don't know, I was fascinated. Because I was fascinated, because I live in London, and mm. there's no terrain or whatever. It's all, it's all buildings. It's all, it's all concrete. So, um, so it was a real pleasure to see. And, now, Dorian, Doctor Who. Yes. Since you probably know we're a Doctor Who fan base yes, page. Yes, I sort of guessed that. <laughs> How did you come across the role of Dorian? Well, um, it was a casting that came through. My agent, uh, Kim Barry, put me up for it. And uh, I was called in by Andy Pryor, the casting director. And of course, when I was called in, I said to myself, yes, I want to do this, yes. Um, and it was December 2009. Uh, it was snowing, I recall. And uh, I had to get to myself to a church hall in Tottenham Court Road in central London. <laughs> I got myself there to find there were seven roly-poly actors, and I thought, shit. Um, but uh, three others I knew, uh, and we just meet each other all the time, and, and we became friendly rivals, really. Uh, and we'd say to ourselves, okay, which one of you bastards is going to get it? You know, sorry. Uh, uh, but I was the chosen one, I was very lucky. That was it. I had six lines to learn overnight. Uh, did it before a camera, was asked to do it three times, uh, and uh, that was it. I was in and out within 20 minutes, and I just had to wait. And then the first I knew I got the role was my agent called to say, can I speak to the big blue intergalactic <laughs> black marketeer? So that's what I... And with your experience of TARDIS, is it... Better, bigger on the inside, or is it a lot of green screen? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I mean, of what I saw, it is a set. Marvellous. Yes, um, the um, head upside down in a box, that, yeah. that scene uh, was done on two separate days. Yeah. On the first day, it was doing everything for Matt, uh, and then I was dealt with later. Uh, but Matt asked for me to come on to the set. You can imagine I suffered. Probably so saying. Well. He wanted, and I sat underneath the console and spoke the lines for him then to react to. So that was really good. And then afterwards, he spent about 10 minutes showing me around the TARDIS. Absolutely. I was 12. I was going around and spent. And of course, I really, in his TARDIS, I really liked the old fashioned typewriter. For some reason, that fascinated me. So, uh, so it was really good. And it was Matt who encouraged me to go on the um, sci fi circuit. Mm. So. There we go. Hey, second time round to New Zealand following the sofa. Second, and I hopefully a third. You know, these things come around quite regularly. So we're going to be looking at Wellington possibly next time. Well, I, I joked with um, Bill and Adele that uh, uh, Wellington is the only one of the conventions I've not been to now. <laughs> so I need to fit that in. So I've got a full house. Yeah, well, I, I, I can say. I mean, I haven't hit the South Island myself yet. I need yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all and they're all excellent and worldwide. All the conventions follow a certain pattern, mm. but I must say the Armageddon ones are re really extremely well organised, the, the fans are delightful, uh, and uh, the days go so quickly. Yeah, well, I mean, I've done, I've, was I should say, I've been to Wellington twice, I went to Auckland well, last year, I have to say, and yes, I was very impressed, considering I've been to Wellington and thought how great it was, and I went yeah. to Auckland, and it's like, whoa! Yeah. They've the sheer them. numbers was extraordinary. Wasn't it? Last year they said twenty two thousand on day one. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like whoa. Well, over uh, the biggest one I've been to is in Salt Lake City, okay. whereas over a weekend it was one hundred and thirty thousand people. It's oh, a fair bit of people. It's amazing, it, utterly amazing, and um, there's all the stall, um, uh, the people who are selling their wares. Mm. There's a whole industry feeding the conventions. And likewise, the conventions sort of feed the other industries as well. Yes. And I always think that um, if the concept of convention stopped, then unemployment would rise, <laughs> as well as the, um, the wealth of several therapists. <laughs> 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 it's a wonderful outlet for people who might have certain angst mm. uh, to come to a convention 
Because if nothing else, they're exhausted by the end of it. Aren't they? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I can say that myself. I mean, I've got to drive back to Wellington afterwards, so... Oh, gosh, what sort of distance is that from Hamilton? Oh, I know it's 660 to Auckland from Wellington, so we're about... about five hours. Five hours, Five yeah. hour drive after... Oh, my five gosh. Six. I tried to do an eight-hour shift at work beforehand oh, as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, no, I know what it's like. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, but it was, an, it was a beautiful drive, so you've got to go by car. If you're going to go do it, you've got to go through National Park, Desert Road, go yes. do all of that. Uh, when are you leaving the country? Uh, in theory, Monday, but we've got a cyclone on its way, haven't we? So that might get delayed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yes, in theory, Monday, Monday the 16th. At 10.45pm. Oh, out of Auckland? Or? Out of Auckland. Oh, okay. I, I then land in London on the Tuesday at 10am. So it only looks as if I'm flying for about 12 hours, right? Where in fact it's more like 24. Yes. Yeah. So there's a and bit of time lost. <laughs> bit of time there's a, there's a, a bit of a loop there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. And uh, Heathrow, oh, well, what should I say, London, I should say, yeah. and in LA or Singapore? Yeah, via LA. LA. Yes. Okay, no, I've, I've really wanted to do the, I don't know why I just want to do the other way. Well, I was expecting to do the sort of Beijing and Shanghai route, yeah. but um, it came via LA. But I'm very impressed with Air New Zealand. Very good. The staff are very friendly, uh, uh, and um, the uh, the flight, the accommodation, the seating I have is excellent. Are you first class? Oh no, I'm not worthy of first class. No, a premium economy does me. Oh, okay. And the seat I had. Coming out was right next to the toilet. <laughs> so, going. so, plus side is that I know exactly where it is. Downside is you get to hear everything else what's going on. So, but their air conditioning is very good. So, but no, it's very good. Everybody's very friendly, and it's interesting they do wake you up because oh, okay. uh, they do make sure you have something to drink. Because uh, what I didn't take on board is a flying, you can get dehydrated. So yeah. I've been told. So. Well, I've not much experience myself on flying, I've only flown domestically. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I have to say, it's only Auckland to Wellington, and uh, I think I've done Blenheim once. Right. Yeah, so that, that was a bit interesting. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I've got used to flying. Um, the turbulence I quite like, but sometimes it can be a bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to have such a huge plane knocked around like a ping pong ball does make you worry slightly. Mm. Yeah, but it's okay. But at least with turbulence you know you're doing something. Yes. Otherwise you're just sitting there in this box. <laughs> yeah. And my seats are invariably in the centre of the plane, so I can't even look out a window. Mm. But there we go. Yeah. So what other acting have you done? Doctor Who, outside Doctor Who I should say? Uh, yeah, when, uh, uh, I'm, over the years I've done everything. Uh, covered the whole spectrum of the industry, so I've done lots of theatre, lots of telly, so, uh, and, and several films on the uh, telly front. Um, I'll name names and you'll either know them or not. Oh, yeah. So there's the bill. Oh, then yeah. Oh, that does, yeah. it's not on anymore, but no, it's a good it's show. There is talk that they're going to bring it back, but um, how true that is, I have no idea. No, I'm not used to watch so, it. There, so there's the bill, there's uh, London's Burning, uh, One Foot in the Grave. Um, uh, doctors. Uh, there was a thing called Sheepy Shop. Okay, no, I hear yeah. that and I've just um, uh, I did a, uh, one episode of a series called Getting On, from which I've just completed a, a new comedy series from the BBC called Puppy Love. Uh, and I play the husband to a, a wife who owns and runs a doggy training centre. Hence <laughs> Puppy Love. And um, oh, wow. I'm a regular in that one, so it's really good. On the films front, uh, Les Miserables, the deal was in that. Um, Harry Potter, a thing called Fart, which died a death. Well, I think the name didn't help. Beg. Uh, so it's a lot, lots and lots of things. If people go to my website, fisherbecker.info, they can see my, well, I won't say my entire, but you'll see a fair splattering of my CV. Oh, okay. So I've done everything from uh, comedy to drama as well. Ooh. I'm lucky I can do that. And if you got a job opportunity over in New Zealand, would you consider taking it up? Of course I would. So I'm, I'm a jobbing actor, and you know, you know, 
I look at all plausibilities. It's very interesting because I'm currently uh, touring in the UK, or finished touring in 2014, but it's been extended by one man show. My Dalek has a puncture. Right. And um, from that, I now get theatres uh, all over the world now saying, I uh, understand you're doing my Dalek as a puncture, can you bring it here? So I, I do it sometimes at conventions. They ask me to do it instead of doing a panel. Uh, but when I come over for a convention, if I can get the opportunity to do it as well, that would be cool. So, for example, uh, I will be doing Florida Supercon in Miami in June. And then a couple of weeks later, I will be at Britfest, uh, uh, which is uh, another convention in Omaha. And in between, uh, a TV station in uh, Nashville is going to film my show. Oh, nice. So, it's so another three weeks away from home. Yeah, your, your passport's going to have a lot of stamps in that. Yeah, yeah. I need a new passport before it runs out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, I, the, the travelling is tiring, uh, but the events are wonderful, and there is always an opportunity for work, provided you're, you're allowed. Mm. You know? I mean, for America, I can work in America because I've got a, an American work visa. So oh, yeah. that's no problem yes. at all. I don't know what. Over here, I think there's no issue as long as I'm being paid in the UK. I think that's okay. Oh, is that how it works? Or, or I'm, I don't know. Well, well you pay tax over here. I think I just carry on until somebody arrests me. <laughs> uh, no, they do that to student loan defaulters like here. Yeah. And I think if I'm here more than 12 months, that is the thing that raises an issue. Oh, yes. But, uh, but the rules keep on changing, uh, depending on who's in power. <laughs> yes. But uh, if somebody makes an offer, I always say to them, am I allowed to work there? Well, that's a good point. And then, you know, then the onus is on them to find out and tell me what I need to do. Yes. So, yeah, well, you don't want to turn up and find out you haven't got the right visa. Well, no, that's, um, it's all good fun. Yeah. Well, in my, in my work visa for the States came around by accident. Because <laughs> I, well, because I was, I, was, I was coming, I was going into America on an ESTA form, which is a a waiver a visa form that you do electronically. Oh, okay. Uh, but I applied for it this time round and it got declined. So I had to go to uh, the US Embassy in America and be interviewed or oh. interrogated, depending on the way you look at it. But once I had a chat with them and, uh, and everything, they said, well, well, we'll offer you a B1, B2 work visa, which allows me, apparently, to work in the States for 90 days a year and it's valid for 10 years. Oh, so that's my trigger. pension sorted out. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, you know, I mean, so, <laughs> what it means now, I, I don't have to worry. Because some yes. sometimes these jobs come up very quickly. Yes. Other yeah. times it's months and months ahead. Yes. Uh, um, and normally the normally the last minute ones means I'm a uh, I'm a last resort, <laughs> or or somebody's no, dropped out. Yeah, yeah. So so that's it. Yeah. It's really great. I'm really grateful to the fans. It's really good fun. It can be tiring, uh, but I can't complain really. <laughs> and no. you're interviewing me in New Zealand. I know. Who would well, have thought was... that five years ago? Well, yes, yeah. You've interviewed someone who hasn't even been in the interview game for long either, myself. So five years ago today, I had just finished filming a Pandorica Opens. So it wasn't due for screening until June 2010. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. All. So, I think I was still working for Domino's and Levin at the time. And <laughs> I think that's where, where my boss got me into Doctor Who as well. Oh. I took right, right all off over. Thank you, Sherry, for that. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah she was a good boss. So, yeah, five years ago, yeah, I was still, yeah, five years, this time five years ago, I was still living at Dad's. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, and you know, well, I've moved out of Levin and now off to Wellington. <laughs> yeah, and the Doctor Who part. Is, you know how there's going around at the moment, people don't like Stephen Moffat. Is he much nicer in person than what people make him out on stage? What do you mean people don't like Stephen Moffat? Oh, I don't know. They think, he, think he's uh, needs to go. <laughs> Does, well, I'm, I can't possibly comment on that. It's, but, uh, it's because I, he, he kills all the good characters off. Yeah, yeah but, well, it's but like, he brings in brilliant yeah, characters. And then he brings them back. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't Stephen for Mr. Stephen Moffat, I wouldn't be here. Well, that's a point. So, yeah. um, so no, I've yeah, been a bit nasty, maybe. But uh, no, I like uh, I like Stephen Moffat. He's always been very kind to me. Uh, but you know, he is the man in charge. Yes. 
Yeah. So, uh, but uh, now, what, what do fans know? <laughs> <laughs> what do fans know? Do you think Neil Cross might be his successor? I don't mind who will be their successor, to be honest, as mm. long as the standard stays high. Yeah, because I'd love to see it filmed in New Zealand, and possibly yourself as well. With the I, I'd quite like uh, what's his name, Tom McRae? Tom McRae, yeah, yes, I've heard. He, he wrote um, The Girl Who Waited. Oh. Yes, and I love my pompadour. Yes, I, I actually, um, I actually liked that one particularly. Mm. Uh, I it was it's very well. different. Yes, but who knows? I, I like writers. I like talking to writers. I respect writers, having tried to write some stuff of my own, mm. uh, and uh, you know, good luck to them all. Yeah. Now, what you said earlier, you were a writer. Um, was it not earlier on here in your yes. panel, I should say? Right. No. Well, so yes, uh, yes, we were there for far too long. Really. Far too long. <laughs> uh, you've heard of Mount Tarawera? Yes. Do you think a Doctor Who story could arrive mm -hmm. from the pink and white terraces? <laughs> you never know. Yeah, I yes. just think there will be something that. Yes, you never know. It um, it'll be interesting. I think, as far as Doctor Who concerned, uh, a story could be set anywhere. And generally, the, the, the fans will accept it. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I'd just love to see if, you know, because they did Pompeii, so, yeah. you know, doing. You never know. Yeah, doing the Mount Tanawera would be great. Or the Lake Taupo eruption, if you heard of that yes, one. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, the terrain the, uh, is fantastic for New Zealand, uh, in New Zealand. But I suppose the hobbits have sort of claimed that. <laughs> You but um, it'll, it'll be to whoever, I, I'd like Stephen Moffat to continue for a while, but if he chooses to give up, whoever takes over, I think they should uh, be allowed to stretch their own imaginations and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. And have you ever had a desire to play the role of the Doctor? And funny enough, it was the Master I would have liked to be. The Master? Mm. Mm. But, uh, but if I'm offered the Doctor, I would. Rabbit, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know why. Uh, initially, uh, it was. Always, I think the master is a, is a, in some ways, is a much more complicated character than the mm. doctor. Oh, the doctor gives the master a run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do remember the John Pertwee, uh, was it Roger Dalgood? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. His era, I, you know, I've watched it on VHS because mm. I brought a whole heap of classic Doctor Who. VHS, <laughs> my gosh. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, they're sitting in the basement of my house at the moment. Uh. <laughs> yeah, they were um, some, someone's private collection. Yes. Yeah. And I have to admit, I liked watching, you know, those two were perfect as they, you know, you had it? two very strong actors yeah playing opposite each other and i think that's why i helped but uh, yeah. i you know um tenant and sims excellent yes yeah. yeah and it was uh, you know it was interesting to see uh, was it was it john sims in the master because i remember him from the life of mars days yes yeah yeah so it was just like whoa yes. yeah yeah because he did life on mars before doctor who i think yes yeah. yeah, I would have. Uh, I would have liked Derek Jacobi to have a, had a longer outing as the master. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there could be a backstory before he becomes uh, Professor um, Yana. 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 Yes. Yeah. So it could be done. And Dorian, of course, has a vortex manipulator. Yes. So, and I can't believe that he didn't try it. <laughs> he must have tried it out. I oh, mean, yes. It's, it's a toy, isn't it? You've got, got to see where did he end up. And of course, he could end up anywhere. It would be. I did um, have a fantasy one time that he was playing around with it too much that he, that he actually uh, found this box and he opened it and saw his own head in it. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> but I don't know whether that would have caused a time wibbly wobbly thing. But that would have now that I would quite like to explore as well. I don't know. Can possibly. you imagine? Can you imagine? Yeah. You know, poking around is around in an attic. What's here? Let's open this up. My God, it needs your own head. You know? <laughs> what? Might have to do that, like our trimmings and needles, something that might be a good idea. Yeah. It would be very good. I would definitely be up for that. Yeah. Girl Stephen Moffat. <laughs> and I would love to uh, go head to head. No pun intended. With uh, Peter Capaldi. <laughs> yes, I mean, who? What actor wouldn't? Really? Yeah. So, but but as a Doctor Who fan, you know, I'd like uh, Dorm to come back as well. And you guys keep on telling me you want more. Mm. 
And but it's up to the powers that be. Yes, um, spin-offs. Do you think they should be? You know, they could have a Dor- Dorian spin-off. They, there's a couple of others. There's the um, Jenny Strix and Madam. Well, and, and, and now I can tell you this: there was because it appeared in the Doctor Who magazine. <laughs> there, so it must be true, right? Um, there was talk of the Barmy Army, which was Strax, Jenny, and Vastra, and it did include Dorian. And I thought of myself. That, that he would be a bit like Charlie's Angels, and Dorian would be the voice, you know. <laughs> voice of being, the speaker. Yeah, but instead of being just a recording, he would appear on a screen somewhere else. More than Charlie's Angels. Yeah. I mean, but, I don't, but that idea lasted, it was in the air for about, what, two months, and that was it. Oh, okay. But you, but you just don't know. I want a Jack in the River. Yes. You know. I'm, uh, another story I did sort of puzzle in my own mind was that um, the Doctor... Jack Harmless and the and Dorian are in some sort of vacuum somewhere. They don't know how to work. They get out. <laughs> and uh, uh, and the whole episode is the relationship between the three. And then uh, um, I can picture the Doctor keeps saying to Kim, yeah, and then, stop uh, and then Jack Harkness <laughs> happens upon a zip, and uh, as you can imagine, he can't can't not, resist not not can't resist. <laughs> A fly, so he sort of he sort of zips open this vacuum, and they find they're in somewhere else. Oh. Discuss. <laughs> Never <laughs> children of the possibly. Well, I mean, I mean, it started off really. I didn't really think about it too much at all until people kept on asking me, "What was Dorian's debt? You know, what would you like to do?" And blah blah blah. So, uh, uh, so it's only me sort of thinking off the top of my head. Yeah. Now, anything. In your acting career, have you've said things that you said, I suggest stuff and it should be done this way, and they did it your way. Have you... Dorian, <laughs> because, because I didn't need to say, uh, because what was very strange was, I think the assumption was I knew what I was doing. There was no real discussion about Dorian. Uh, the, the only thing is, when I did the audition, the script, it said set homage to Star Wars, Dorian, large blue man, thinks Sydney Green Street. And those who are Casablanca fans will know Sydney Green Street is a large guy in a white suit who is a sort of black marketeer. Uh, he also wears a fez, which is another link. But I knew, uh, pardon me, I am a fan of uh, Casablanca. Oh, I do apologise, it's my chicken rap sort of fighting back. Um, I'm a fan of Casablanca, so uh, I knew exactly who Sidney Green Street was. So, and a lot of, of uh, Sidney Green Street is his stillness, and that's what I brought to Dora. And then there was no real discussion about Dora at all, um, other than uh, Peter Hoare, the director of A Good Man Goes to War, uh, said to us after we did the read through, "If any of you want to go have a word with me about your character, please feel free to call." But you could never get a hold of him. <laughs> so I sent him a text and asked for an email, which he kindly forwarded me. And I did, I typed up a few suggestions. Um, and uh, one of which was that um, whilst talking to Madame Vastra, I would have two guns pointed at me, which I just move away. And also, he's either playing with or counting money. Is, uh, it, and the idea was that he was trying to show that he wasn't afraid. <laughs> yeah, again, but a bit of stillness. Uh, anyway, I heard nothing. Turned up at the set, sat down, was ready to do the take, and then suddenly somebody came up to me, it was the props man, he said, Hello, Dorian, he said, here's your money. <laughs> See, and then somebody else came, oh, and these are the two guys going to point the gun at you. <laughs> So they had read my email, but nobody had actually got back to me to say, actually, that's a good idea. But it just appeared. So, so um, and I found this a lot, uh, particularly with television. They assume you, you've learnt your lines, you've thought about it yourself, you've come up with the character, uh, and you just go for it. And if they're happy with what you've gone with, then that's it. Uh, and the only things they did a couple of times with me was they asked for options. Uh, they just want different ways so they can decide what to do. And the classic case is the line uh, at the end of episode six, 
um, where they, are at, but they at the beginning they said, "We just want to take four takes of this. Yes. Can you give us four different options?" So I gave them four different options. And I must admit, the one they've chosen is absolutely by and far the, the best. one you would have chosen. As well. I, it probably was, would have been once I, once they played it back to me. I didn't have any playback facilities, uh, so I just filmed it and had to wait like everybody else. <laughs> you know, no, no sneak peeks. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, there was a playback facility, but I was ne never anywhere near it, and um, I personally didn't want to see something that might make me change my mind. I only wanted the director to change my mind. Ah. Yeah. Otherwise, I just went for it. Yeah. Just go for it. It's just like me. If they're not, if they don't come to you, then you cannot be blamed if you produce something they don't like. <laughs> I so like what you're saying. Well, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much for asking. Yeah. It was good fun. It was a pleasure. You're mm -hmm. number two, and the full. You're the first one for a full one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, excellent. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I hope that's a. A pleasure, not an omen. Oh, it's a pleasure, always. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank, well, thank you for joining us, and, well, we're going to see who else we managed to get through there, and you'll begin to see our new studio later in the year with our live mixing facilities. So, it's going to be good. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye.